So, Squid Game was good, wasn't it? If you don't know it, here's a quick spoiler-free synopsis. A load of people, 456 to be exact, all in extreme debt or poverty, are recruited to play a series of children's games with a chance to win a 45.6 billion prize. That's Korean won, which converts to a paltry 28 million pounds or 38 million dollars. Still, not bad. Of course, there is a downside. If you lose, you're eliminated and will take no further part in the competition. Or anything else, really, because you're eliminated. Now, I'd love to play this game IRL, but obviously I don't have millions of pounds to give away and I'm not one to do a murder, so let's turn the stakes all the way down to one and reduce the prize a bit. Let's make Quid Game. I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and with minor spoilers for Squid Game, here are real life board game alternatives you can use to play the games for Squid Game at your game group. That needs a shorter title. Okay, let's pick these games, but before I do, do you know most people who watch my videos are not subscribers, so if I flip heads on this coin, then you must subscribe. And what do you know? It came up heads. Can't show you, but it was. And please comment below, let me know which games you would pick, and if I get enough comments, I'll make a subscriber edition of this video later on. Red light, green light. Okay, we need this first game to narrow down the 456 players as much as possible in order to make the following games easier to manage. In Squid Game, this is done via red light, green light. A large freaky girl hides and sings. While hidden, you can move, but when she stops singing, she turns around. If she catches you moving, you're eliminated. You also have a time limit to get over the goal line, and anyone who doesn't make it is, of course... <laughs> So here we need a push your luck game that's quick, favours the bold and the brave. It's easy to play because we don't want it to be too difficult this early on, but we do want to make sure there's a bit of tension. Can't Stop is a classic push your luck game, so let's group everyone into four and go with that. On a turn, players roll four dice and put them into pairs. It advances markers in the two numbered columns associated with their totals. Then they either roll again to continue or stop and bank their progress so far. But you can only advance in three columns per turn, so if you roll and you can't legally move in any of your columns, you lose all your progress so far. Get to the end of three columns first and you win, and the other three players, free to go and do something else I guess, the winners will go through to game two of Quid Game. Pop G. Also known as Honeycomb, players in Squid Game have to cut out a shape made from this brittle traditional Korean sweet made of sugar and baking soda. Cut it out in the time limit and they progress. If it breaks at any point, they are eliminated. Ah, you get it. They get shot in the face. So we need a solo dexterity game, hmm. Now it doesn't have to be solo for quid game, it just needs to be something that adds tension, you know, make them sweat a bit. In junk art, players use a vast array of pieces to build towers in a range of different games named after cities, but it's Paris I'm looking at for quid game. Here the players have three cards showing the pieces in the game and you play one for the player on your left to play into a shared structure the players are building. Once a player has knocked over three pieces on this structure they are eliminated and the other three players will go through to the next round of quid game. This is much more forgiving than the figurative bloodbath that was Can't Stop. Chodorigi. Basically tug of war, where one team will advance and the other team will be dragged to hull. Dragged to hell. So we need a strength based physical team game. Not easy. But actually Squid Game shows us that tug of war can be won via teamwork, communication and strategy rather than pure strength. Keep in mind that one winning team was weak because they had an old man and two women, their words, not mine. So maybe these are the attributes my contestants need rather than just pure strength to get through to the next round. In Captain Sonar, four teammates control a submarine trying to locate and destroy the enemy submarine controlled by the other team. Each player on each team has a unique role with the captain barking out orders, the first mate tracking the systems, the engineer tracking and repairing damage, and the radio operator keeping an ear on their opponents trying to work out where they are. Each role plays an important part, and as you're playing in real time, communication is key and the best team will win. Well, the first team to deal four damage to the opposing submarine will win. This is a great way of halving the field in time for the next brutal round. Marbles. In my opinion, this is the best episode of the show, and one of my favourite episodes of TV of all time. Here, players have 10 marbles each and are in pairs. They have to get the 10 marbles from their opponent slash partner without using violence, so they can't just forcefully take them. So these pairings have to choose their own game to decide who's going to be the winner. Some are deduction and luck, some are based on skill, and some are played by background characters you don't care about. So why not do the same? Let's stack up some two player only games and let them decide what they want to play. But there is a time limit of 30 minutes in this round, so anyone who hasn't won at this point is out. So we need to pick some shorter games, you know, give them a chance. You can have games like Mr. Jack for a bit of two player deduction, where one player is trying to keep Jack the Ripper hidden, and the other player is trying to deduce which character on the board is hiding Jack. 
For the miniatures gamers, we could look at a bit of Funkoverse, or maybe even Unmatch for a little bit of combat. For skill, we have Clask for a tabletop sports style board game, and a Cube Quest for a cube flicking destruction game. And um, crossbows and catapults? Crossfire. But as we're adding a board game twist to Squid Game, we need to get some classic two-player games in there. The winner, of course, will go through to the next round of Quid Game. Seven Wonders Duel sees you build your civilization by drafting cards and winning by either military, science, or just straight-up points. Patchwork is a tile placement game where you select tiles to try and cover as much of your quilt in patches as possible, trying not to leave gaps. In Jaipur, you're swapping cards from your hand with those in the middle, as is your opponent, to make sets to sell for points. We could even push for Santorini, even though it's technically a two-to-four player game. Of course, there are no end of two-player only abstract games. Let's just go with Hive for the sake of this video. Glass Stepping Stones. Terrifying. The remaining players, 16 at this point in Squid Game, choose turn order without knowing what's coming. Turns out they will, in order, jump across several platforms, each with two options, left and right. One is safe to jump on tempered glass. The other is regular old breakable by human weight over a massive fall type glass. So go first and you've got the most 50-50 decisions to make, making it almost impossible to get across all 18 platforms in one go. Go last and those in front of you may have gone too slow, leaving you stranded when time runs out and you'll be eliminated anyway. The time limit for the whole thing is 16 minutes and those in the front get nervy knowing the next jump may be the last thing they ever do so they slow the whole process down. Now modern board games tend to handle both player elimination and turn order bias very well after years of practice, so in order to get our two for the finale of the quid game, we're going to have to get creative. Now bear with me, let's go with roll and write games. I'm talking about games like That's So Clever where you're drafting different coloured dice to tick off different boxes allowing you to score points and gain and chain extra actions to ramp up your score. Super Skill Pinball sees you roll dice and use the results to mark off places on a pinball table where your ball hit, again to rack up points. Now both of these games are playable solo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split everyone up into two groups, I'm going to make them choose turn order without knowing what game they're going to play and then they're going to play it. Now those going early could try and take their time and try and get a good score, but you're going to have 10 plus people behind you screaming in your ear telling you to hurry up. That's going to be difficult. Now those going later will know the score they need to be, so they know how aggressive they need to be from the off. But these are both 30 minute games, so I'm going to limit this round to 3 hours. That's 15 minutes per player. The top scoring player from each group will win, and if time runs out, anyone who hasn't finished or hasn't gone yet is also eliminated. The winner of each game will head into the final of Quid Game. Squid Game, a traditional children's game popular in South Korea. This is played on a playing area that is made up of a square, a triangle and a circle making the shape of a squid, hence the name. It's also why the guards have those shapes on their non-faces. The goal is for the attacking team to cross the centre of the field, then attempt to reach the home square drawn at the opposite end. All this while hopping for reasons and the other team trying to stop them, so basically here we need an asynchronous two-player game. In Star Wars Rebellion, one player plays as the Galactic Empire, controlling TIE Fighters, Star Destroyers and a Death Star trying to find the Rebel base to destroy it to win the game. One player is the Rebel Alliance, with troopers, T-47 airspeeders, Kirillian corvettes and others. So they're outmatched in terms of firepower. So to win as the Rebels, you need to keep your base hidden, get planets on your side and strengthen your reputation to inspire a revolt. In Raptor, one player controls scientists that are trying to stun their opponent's raptor to steal her babies. They win if they stun the mama raptor enough to neutralise her, or they capture three baby raptors. The raptor player wins if three baby raptors have escaped from the board, or all the scientists have been removed. Both very asynchronous, and both very good to determine the winner of Quid Game. But there are more we could look at beyond two player only games. We could go with games like Gaia Project, where the players play the same game, but the factions play very differently. Or we could go with games like Root, where the factions you play drastically changes how you play the game. Whichever game we go with, the winner will win the quid game and win one quid. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and do remember to like, share and subscribe. Remember to comment below on which board game you would use to replace the games for the squid game and that maybe I'll do another video if I get enough comments. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and I'll see you soon.